Hey, check out what I found chilling on the side in the trash. A dinner plate. A very patriotic dinner plate. Huh. I wonder. Bion! Well, alright then. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Gamebox, the show where we talk about games of yesteryear. You remember the Captain America movie? Dates only he could defeat a superhuman madman. Whoa, not that one. This one. You just don't know when to give up. I could do this all day. Yeah, I bet you do. You remember the feeling watching good old cat kick some Hydra ass? Remember leaving the theater with the feeling of, I want to kick ass like that. I want a shield. Well, what if I told you you can. Well then, sir and or madam, I present to you Captain America Super Soldier. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Well, that's why I'm here. Developed by Next Level Games and published by Sega, it was released July 19th, 2011, the same day the first Avenger film was released. And yes, that does make this a movie tying game. Whoa, 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 wait. Trust me, it's not that bad. So, a little background. Something I didn't do when I did my Spider-Man video, so here we go. Stephen Grant Rogers was born small and with several health problems. As he got older, America had entered World War II. Since Steve was a true American, he decides to do his part and tries to enlist. However, since his body was one gust to win away from turning to dust, he is denied. He even goes as far as to use different names to try to enlist. Eventually, he crosses paths with a man by the name of Dr. Abraham Erskine, who, with the help of the US government, turned little Stevie into the badass Nazi puncher we all know and love. And Super Soldier, who plays as Cap himself. I mean, Obbs. It has voice talents Chris Evans, Haley Atwell, and Sebastian Stan. But sadly, no Hugo Weaving. So, What's the story? The game is set in 1944. When Cap interferes a Hydra attack on the front lines in France, he finds out the Hydra is packing some new duds. It turns out, Armin Zola is spearheading a new project called Project Masterman. Dr. Zola was able to learn his own way to enhance the human body, giving birth to his very own version of Uber Soldiers. See what he did there? So now Cap has to kick in some heads to stop this madman. In my research, I found out this game is considered canonical. The story actually takes place during that sweet montage in the first Avenger. The combat in Super Soldier plays like it wants to be part of the Arkham series, but it's not quite there. It lacks the fluidity that the Arkham games had. When Cap blocks an attack, there is a slight pause before you can attack again. I don't know, maybe it was just a copy of the game I had, but it broke the flow for me. And the graphics of the game are not that bad. It was a PlayStation 3 game, so there was a bit of hit and miss with that generation. Besides his fist, Cap has more tricks up his sleeve. Cap can throw a shield and line him to stun enemies during fights. He can also deflect projectiles. Something he never got the timing down for. Okay, so this is kind of out of nowhere, but can we talk about how dumb Cap's costume looked in the Avengers? I mean, yeah, it's comic book accurate, but it didn't transfer well and just ended up looking out of place. Am I alone on this? Anywho, there is an upgrade system included in the game, and to be perfectly honest, I kind of forgot it was there when I was playing. I mean, sure, there are some skills that come in handy, like the increased number of baddies you can hit with their shield, but many of the upgrades that I purchased, I never used. The most powerful attack in the game is called Crippling Strike. This is your end all move. Seriously, this move lays out most baddies in one hit, The only ones who can take it to the chin like a champ are the larger enemies and the bosses. Speaking of bosses, Super Soldier has a handful of them. This includes Armin Zola, Iron Cross, Madame Hydra, Baron Von Strucker, which kind of doesn't make sense since he was in Age of Ultron, and Red Skull. Kind of. And as cool as it was to see such a colorful cast of villains challenge our Star Spangled Hero, unfortunately, all the boss fights tend to play out the same way. 
Attack, Dodge, Fight Some Goons, Fill Up Your Patriot Meter, and Crippling Strike. Rinse and repeat. It did feel like there was a missed opportunity for some interesting encounters. They aren't perfect. Oh boy, are they not perfect. In fact, I was able to win the fight against Iron Cross due to him getting stuck on a rail, allowing me to just wail on him until he's defeated. So yeah, not perfect. Cap can use a super intelligence to match numbers. This acts as the game's puzzles. There is also platforming, or at least what the game considers platforming. Okay, when I think of platforming, I think of games like Prince of Persia, or Prince of Persia. Hell, even Prince of Persia. Yes, I know there are other games with platforming in them, but hear me out. So platforming with jumping, climbing, flipping, and with precise player input. This is not that. Here it functions along the lines of a rhythm game, which is very strange. Now there are no levels in the game. They are more like sections to a larger map. Kind of like another superhero based game. You are on an island after all. Kind of like another superhero based game. The size of the map isn't GTA levels a big, which is good because Cap runs like he's having a pleasant jump down a sunny road. The sections do offer a small bit of exploration. There are collectibles peppered in each section. These include dossiers and ceramic eggs, both which grant Cap that sweet, sweet XP. I will say that my favorite section is the labs, because what secret base is complete without a creepy lab? But the reason I like this area is because of this guy, and the cool thing about him is that he can actually take away Cap's shield. This adds a bit more strategy to the encounter. That is, until you end up using Crippling Strike and end the fight in one hit. There are also film reels that give Cap a leg up on some of the enemies, showing him their weaknesses. You can actually go through the entire game without picking up any of these. Later in the game, Cap can backtrack to previously visited areas to pick up any missed collectibles. But to be honest, there wasn't really reason to go back after that. So all in all, it's a decent game, in that play and forget kind of way. Throwing the shield around was pretty cool. But as I played through the game, I couldn't help but feel a bit of enjoyment. Isn't that what games are all about? Also, I am pretty sure this is the only third person Captain America game we'll be getting for a while. So with that in mind, it does its job. And in the slew of movie tying games go, this one isn't that bad. But that, it's not saying much. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a dinner plate to go find. Honk. Thank you for watching, I really do appreciate it. Now it has been a few months since my last upload, and from this point on, I'll be working hard on getting these out at a more frequent pace. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated on the happenings of this channel. And as always, spread the awesome, and I will see you next time.